Yeah, if you saw the last video, I took a little bang on this side. It was hardly even a crash. It was somewhere between a drop and a crash, a crap. And crap shouldn't bend your bars. But in this case, it did. I rode home with that little bit of a crooked bar thing. When I got home, I did the normal thing of kind of loosening up all the bolts on the triples, the axles, and the pinch bolts, and then kind of give everything a wiggle. I've got a video about this. Uh, maybe I need to redo it. Normally, when people tell me I have a bit bars, this method almost always fixes it. It's just that the forks are slightly twisted in the triples. And I was sure that's what I had, but as it turned out, no, I did have a just ever so slightly bent bar. See, the stock bar is just a steel bar. It's basically a pipe. It's not very strong. Going to an aftermarket bar, we'll get an aluminum bar, typically. They're much thicker. The construction of how these are made is just better all around. You can never guarantee a bar will never bend, but these will definitely take a lot more impacts and a lot more abuse than that stock thing will. When we're looking at the different types of bars, you're gonna see two main kind of bars. One is called a seven eighths and one's called a one and one eighth. There's also a one inch bar out there you might see. Uh, that's a cruiser thing. That's not gonna be uh, something you wanna mess with here. All the bars are what's called seven eighths size here on the end. And I know that's a silly American uh, fraction of an inch size. One and one eighth and seven eighths are these in normal talk. At the end of the bars here, this is where all your controls will be put onto, your grips. And that's always gonna be set up for a seven eighths uh, design. If you have an oversized bar, a fat bar, it just means that this center section right here is one and one eighth. And you get some good strength from that. Being thicker here in the middle uh, is pretty good. To go to a bar like this, we would have to go to a set riser adapters. The lower part of our risers are built into the triples. We'd have to go use some sort of adapter to run a bigger bar like this. Now, the other option you have is to just stick with the seven eighths design here, which is the same size all the way through. Typically, I always said that these were not as strong, but I've had several people tell me over the years, well, they said, you know, actually, if you think about it, having this crossbar through here, I've heard some argue that these are even stronger. I don't know. The point is, they're all stronger than stock. And on top of the strength, though, the other thing that you're getting with an aftermarket set of bars is customization. I mean, you can see every one of these bars is a little different. The three main sizes you're going to see have to do with the width of the bars, the height of the bars, and then something known as the sweep of the bars. How hard is that pull back? As you can see, these are at different angles. This is where you gotta really figure out what is good for you and for your motorcycle. You need to sit on the bike and you need to look at your bars where they're sitting now and then try to figure out what would make the most sense for you. What's gonna be comfortable, what's gonna meet your sort of riding style. I think an important thing to do is also to stand up on the bike. When it's a dirt bike, dual sport, super moto kind of bike, you gotta be able to stand up while you're riding. That is something we do regularly. So you need to look at the bars and see what's it like when you're standing. Are you bent over to try to get to the bars? Normally when I go on the set after my market bars, I've sucked a Renthal or Pro Taper. They're just some of the big names out there. I decided to go with this one here. This is called Trackside. Revzilla sent this to me. Now, this is one of their own in-house brands, but they didn't like ask me to like go with that. You know, I, I chose this on my own accord because I wanted to see if it was any good. Typically, when I'm looking at the Pro Taper bars, Renthal bars, I'm looking at like the $60 to $70 range. This was like, I think 40 something dollars. And because it's the Trackside brand, my code will work on this too. So you could get another 10% off of these. It makes them a pretty good bargain. And they had good reviews. So I thought, let's give it a shot. Let's see if they're worth it. Like I said, Revzilla wasn't like pushing me to like, oh, use this Trackside stuff. I chose this as well as a couple other things throughout the build from Trackside because, you know, this is a budget bike. Let's try some of the more budgeted brands. Budget doesn't always mean bad, you know, it just depends on what we're dealing with. I don't see anything that stands out that would make me untrustworthy of this. If they're aluminum, they feel about the same weight as any of those other bars I was just holding. They're just as thick. Rimsdale also sent me a different bar pad to go on top, I, just because it says Honda on it. It is a little bit better foam, I think, too. Not necessary, I just wanted to do it. Also, you're gonna need to get a set of grips. Grips are cheap, they're nice, and this is also another place that you can kind of customize. You can get something that works good for you. I like these pillow tops. That's just something I prefer, but there's a, host of different random grips out there. Now when we go to install these, you're gonna see it's a bit of an involved process. It can appear hard to do, but what I usually tell people, it's just a bit time consuming. Don't be afraid to take on the job. Just know that you need to give yourself a bit of time. Big thanks to Revzilla for sending me this and the other equipment we need to put these bars on the bike. The first thing to do is to start tearing down the old bars. I know we just installed these hand guards, but we need to pull them off. They're gonna get switched anyway for these Zeta ones that we're gonna be putting on next video. I do need to split those up just because the hand guards that we're gonna be replacing these with, they're gonna be turn signals, mirrors, hand guards. They're like serving a lot of purposes and there's a bit of involvement with that. These hand guards from T-Rex, they did hold up in the crash. I will say one thing about them being mounted this close to the master, I did notice is that when they twisted, which inevitably they will do in this style, um, they did stop because of the master itself. That's actually what they what stopped them from rotating, which I'm not real crazy about. I get it that these fit around everything really well, but I could have easily cracked the master when this thing spun on me. 
it's kind of frozen on there. Come on, let go. And you can see our clutch cable is kind of happy just to stay right there. Two Phillips screws to remove these control. Tight little fit, there it goes. Keep them from scratching up that plastic. Just under our brake lever here, we can see the little mechanism that tells the brakes are turning on and off. And you'll see there's two wires that connect into it. We need to pull these off. Just like the other side, there should be two Phillips that hold this in. So we'll need to pull this guy apart and you're gonna have some, some fun going on in here with the throttle cables. So we'll first start by kind of getting the housing off. All right, there's the one with all our electronics. I'm gonna slip that over and kind of put it where the other one was going. And they've kind of given me a weird position here because there's this, normally there'd be some adjustment in this, but this is already bottomed out. So I'm gonna use a little pick tool to get underneath this cable. I gotta be real careful. I don't wanna like fray it up or anything. Just wanna try to work it up here. There's a spot I can get it off at. There we go, it's in it now. Just push this little guy out. There it goes. Now with that off, I can remove the other one. Just gotta pull off the main bar clamps here. These are 12 millimeters. We're gonna reuse this, these, these clamps and this hardware. Kind of brace it like as I take this last bolt out so this bar doesn't flop over and bash something. It'll bend on this side. It's got a little farther pushed down. There's a filled in end, but I mean, it really is just a piece of steel tubing. It's nothing much going on here with these things. Oh yeah, that's, that's actually pretty significantly lighter there. Yeah, we're saving weight in this video. We've been only going the other way so far. There's some measurements inside here and they can kind of help you, uh, one, get it straight left to right. And you can also kind of use that to figure out, you know, this way. Here's the thing though. This part is just something I like to do by feel. The fun thing with these clamps here, uh, some of them have a little arrow. Some of them like these have a little dot. That dot will go forward. This one will actually meet flush and there'll be a slight gap here. Really should tighten the front ones down all the way. Use the rear ones to sort of finish it up. Very gently placing our bar down. We want to put a little bit of tension on these things so they'll stay in place. We only want to be putting a tiny amount because anything more than that, as we sort of move them around trying to figure out where we want everything, we'll end up scratching these bars up. The only way you're gonna find out is to really sit on the bike and see how you feel. I'm kind of thinking maybe about right there. Okay, that is, that's it, that's it, right there. Okay, they will feel a little funny too because they're a little small right now without the grips on. With those tightened, we can tighten our rear ones up. I plan to run full wraparound hand guards on this bike. Because of that, I need to actually cut the end of this throttle tube off. You weren't gonna bother with that. You just need to remove this grip. And once we get it on the bike, we can put the new one on. On some bikes, they are so tightly glued on that it's gonna be nearly impossible to get it off. You might as well just buy a new throttle tube. I know Suzuki's are really bad about that. Or you can try to trim them with a razor. The only tricky thing with that is you don't wanna cut into the plastic tube, so. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to just sort of score it. Kind of like Hulk Hogan taking his shirt off, you know, you can kind of, ah. There's a bunch of um, little serrations on here, little grippy things. That's a really good stock throttle tube. Very nice, Honda. Very nervous to even show y'all I did this because I could see somebody just smashing their throttle tube. I have incredibly lightly snug this down into the vise. I've got my hole here. You could try to like slice this, I guess, and get to a clean point in it, but I'd rather not make this any shorter than it is. So what I'm gonna do is try to open this hole up a little bit with a Dremel, uh, which you'd probably have though if you're starting out, you're gonna have a complete blank one. So what I would do is take a drill, small one to start, do a little pilot hole, then maybe try to punch it up a little bit bigger, just big enough so you can get something like a Dremel in there. Clean that up a little. We got it where it'll easily go on the bar now. No weird catching and spins. Very good, that's what we wanna see. This is where our little locator tab is. Some people will say, just dremel this little piece off. Maybe put a little electrical tape in there. It should keep this thing from rotating. But if these low care tabs are here, I prefer to use them, especially when it comes to the throttle. Last thing I need is this not, you know, something happening where the whole housing is turning and I don't actually have control of the throttle. So what I'm gonna do is actually add those holes to the bar. You can just unconnect these for the moment. And that's fine. I know that sounds probably scary to some of y'all, but don't worry, I'll show you. These are not the end of the world hard thing to reconnect. Just leave these dangling for the moment. What we need to do is basically stick everything on kind of in a dry run to figure out where we want our housing sitting. We'll start by putting a little bit of tape. This will make more sense in just a moment. Hook this all back up how it's supposed to be. An important thing here to note is that this is not gonna fully come together perfectly right now. That tab is gonna keep it from wanting to like fully set down all the way. So we don't wanna like force anything super hard. We could actually snap that thing. 
but we can kind of put it together. Now we have to sit on the bike itself, try not to actually touch that just yet. Big thing is your thumb, right? Your thumb's supposed to operate all these things, so make sure it's in a position that makes sense. We also need to look at our throttle cables and make sure that the routing is not in some weird way. We need to make sure that the bar is sticking out further than our throttle tube. When we go to hand guards, that'll make a lot of sense. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this housing, I'm just gonna squeeze it especially on the back side, because that's where the tab is. It's on the back half of this. This has worked correctly. Should have done something here really cool. If you look right here, we have made a little mark in our tape. This is where that tab is gonna be sitting. Trying to drill a hole into a round bar can be a little bit difficult. A few years ago, what I did is I took a couple extra stock bar clamps like this. I think these are actually off my Grom, and I made I made a little tool. My dad calls this my boring tool. And you can see what it does there is it literally will clamp on the bar. It's got a small hole. So what I'll do is I'll stick this on there. I'll get down there with a flashlight and line this up just perfectly. And to start with, I'll do a pretty small hole, uh, as small as I can get away with. And then we'll size up to uh, the same size that's in our stock bar here. You can't always try to go like a hair or two size smaller than this hole to really locate it in really tight. And I'll probably see if I can get away with that. And go slow. It's very close. There we go, that's it right there. And we made it a little snugger than it was before. Awesome. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease right underneath where the throttle tube itself would sit. Almost like a smear of it on there is all you're really going for. We'll slip our throttle tube back on. Bring our other side around, it kinda goes up under the bars. You don't wanna go crazy on these, they're just going into a plastic housing. Feels good, I've got no movement but our throttle freely turning. I'm gonna reconnect my throttle cables now. I should be able to just hook up one side of it. This is the pull. This is the one that opens the throttle. Let's see, get, yeah, there you go. Loosen this one up real quick. Oh, that's gonna be annoying. It's gonna be one of these operations. Good enough, I should be able to. Yeah, there we go. I'm able to just, there we go, popped it out of there. Now I can get it in. Bring the cable back up, sneak it back into our bracket here. And we'll tighten it back down. There should still be a little bit of slack on both sides and check the operation. It's a 10 millimeter and an eight millimeter. If you just open this up a bit, we can make it so that you can take it completely away. But you don't want no free play in it. You do want a little bit in there. If this was completely tight, as you would turn the bars a little bit, it will pull on this cable, cause the throttle to rev up, which is, you know, potentially very dangerous. Because we have an open throttle tube here, our grip, we need to also make it open on the end. We need to make sure it's not gonna overhang the throttle tube. We want it to be inside the throttle tube on both ends, really. We don't want it rubbing against this housing. And because so we're gonna be running these wraparound hand guards, we don't want it overhanging this grip at all. If you look, you see how there's some little rib things there. You can use those as a pretty good little guide mark. Just a process of going slow and taking your time. Kind of annoys me when I see people that do this and they look so rough. It's like, you know, if you just took a second to trim them. There you go, see, not hard at all. Looks good. <laughs> not all chewed up. By the way, I didn't mention this before. You'll see that one of the grips is like thinner than the other one. The thinner one is to go over the throttle tube. The throttle tube's a bit thick itself, so this way the end result is both grips end up being the same size. So we wanna go stick this guy on now, right? And if you just try to force force it on, you're gonna have you're gonna have some times, especially this one since it's got some serrations in it. Uh, if you put some super glue or grip glue, which is just super glue on there, you'll probably get about maybe this far down and it's gonna start freezing up on you and you're gonna be in real trouble. The key to this is some air. Kind of work this thing down. Try to get it like semi-started. Sometimes we could force these on a bit. And we'll safety wire that in just a bit. Just like our bar caps, there's a side of it that says up. Figure out where that lever needs to be for you, what feels right. And the things we're paying attention to, not just comfort, but making sure everything clears and is looking happy. Bring your tool with you so you can tighten it up. Snug down the top one first. You don't gotta go crazy on it, just snug it down. And then tighten up the bottom one. I always like to make sure that's still spinning freely. Remember, it doesn't matter what order you plug these into, just plug them back in. Go 
we moved over to the clutch side now, I did the same thing to the grip over here, just cut the end off. We don't have to worry, obviously, about this grip making contact with our handguard when we put it on because this doesn't need to twist. It's not a big deal. So we could literally just slip this on and have it right flush with the edge if we want. Or we could say, hey, look, let's look over here on the other side. How far in is the grip and try to put this one similarly, which would give us a little bit of the bar exposed out here. Uh, that way we have nice symmetricalness. Same thing before, just kind of half start this thing here. Yeah, that does not want to turn. Once we safety wire that, that's really not going nowhere. Yeah. Literally, literally no, no movement. I've got these both tighter than they were stock. That's awesome. Let's come down a bit. So it's time to actually safety wire the grips on. And you may be saying, what does that mean? Maybe confused about this. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this is some safety wire and you know, bear some, these are like old motorcycle gloves. I always end up stabbing myself doing this. So I'm gonna try really hard not to. But basically we're gonna put a wrap around a couple points on this grip. Three always seems to be plenty. It'll basically squeeze this grip into the bar a little bit here. I like it because uh, it'll keep the grips from moving. It's not some weird adhesives on here that make this a real pain to change out later. Uh, it works well for me. I know there's always some people that have a, they, don't, they don't like it this way. They wanna do their own thing. Do your own thing, man. This is just this is what I like to do. Any of these little bits that are left you know, on your garage floor or anything, pick these things up. They are just the devil. Normally I always show when I do this, I don't have the fancy safety wire pliers, but these are the fancy ones. My brother got sick of hearing me say that, I guess, and bought me these things. So thanks to my brother, I do have the proper wires, but I've done this plenty of times, literally just using a set of needle nose. I don't, you know, you don't have to have them. With these fancy ones, we can just pull down. Oh, look at it doing all the work for us. Some people like to do a double wrap around the, the grip. I found I don't like doing that. I think you can make some problems for yourself. You can over crush this and literally slice through the grip so don't do that that should be enough right there i'm gonna grab a just a regular pair of politically correct just leave a couple of little threads in it you know we don't want a whole bunch maybe two to three now we have something super dangerous all right that's a very savvy thing i like to take a flathead screwdriver and kind of start by trying to fold it and keep folding that up we're going to drive this wire into the grip I'm gonna take my bare finger here. I mean, really even just pressing into this, I cannot feel any nub on there. And that's what you're looking for. We don't want this to be dangerous. And now I'm just gonna repeat that, like I said, in the middle, and then once more on this outer edge. Really simple. Grip's not going anywhere, not stabbing me. Awesome. This is just a little dish soap with water. They clean up pretty good. All I gotta do now is throw our bar pad on. I have slammed my head into a bar off-roading. Uh, I always thought, do we really need these bar pads, you know? But yeah, I've, I've actually gone up a trail, like had the bike get a little, a little squirrely and slammed my head into this before. So <laughs> these are a good thing to have. Do we want the Honda part facing er, us or facing the world? <laughs> I think we'll do it facing the world, right? Yeah. Feels good, feels very, feels more dirt bikey like to me now. It felt kind of weird before with the pulled back bars. That does a better feel. Definitely gonna be stronger. Woo! Uh, so make sure everything still, you know, works freely. All right, I know we had to make a weird side diversion with the bars. Everyone wanted to see the motard wheels. We also kind of need to throw the hand guards on now too while we're at it. But we're gonna bang that out real quick and I'm gonna get on the supermoto wheels and everyone wants to see that. Uh, also, there's a better version of this video that came out about a week ago on Patreon. Extended all that good stuff and you can join that for just $1 a month. Add free, early access, all that good jazz. And if you do join, uh, be sure to link your Discord so you can go and chat with me in the Discord chat. I'm usually in there every night for a little bit, hanging out with the boys, having a good time. So. I've got some pretty cool hand guards that we're gonna put on this thing. It's a whole setup. I think you guys are really gonna like it. So I'm gonna get on that. I'm probably gonna jump on that literally in just a minute here. Go eat some lunch. It's banging on, man. We're getting it, we're getting it there. See y'all next video.